the way we get you to draw ionic compounds in class is really false it's really fake and it can lead to some horrible horrible misconceptions in this video i'm going to go over what the true structure is and how that can help you work out or remember what the properties are Thank you to Tuition Kit who are sponsoring this video. They are helping me buy lots of models and equipment so that I can make better videos and I can explain things better for you. So this one here. This model I've got here, which took me ages and ages and ages to build. I mean, look at it. It's massive. This is an ionic compound. It's sodium chloride. We have our sodium here in um, silver and our chloride here in green. And the first thing I want you to notice is that it's massive. It's not just like sodium chloride that we get you to draw in class, things in a one-to-one -one ratio. It is a giant ionic compound. With every single sodium, if I try and point to one of the ones in the middle here, you see this one here? In the middle, you'll see it's not just next to one chloride, it's next to lots of them. It's next to the ones left and right of it, above and below it, and then the ones that are tucked into it. So each um, sodium or each chlorine has six of the opposite atoms that are really, really close to it. So this is why the bonding in it is so, so strong. Now when I say bonding, it's not really a bond that's going on. Because we have the transfer of electrons, we have the creation of positive and negative ions. What we get are electrostatic attractions which means that the positive ions are really strongly attracted to the negative ions. But it's not just the one positive or negative ion that it's transferred the electron to or from. It's all of them. So here we have sodium, which is going to get a positive charge because it's going to lose an electron, surrounded by chlorines, which have negative charges because they've gained an electron. And what's going to happen is this positive charge is going to be attracted to every single negative charge around it. So it's not just one bond that it's making, not just one attraction that's going on. There are loads of attractions. The negative ion is attracted to all of the positive ions that it can feel an influence from. And these are really, really strong attractions. It is really, really hard to break them. A lot of energy needs to go in to break these strong electrostatic interactions, which is why you have a really, really high melting and boiling point. Now, dissolving is a different matter. Ionic compounds will dissolve quite easily. That's because water, which has um, a partial charge in it, can come in and attack and pull off. It will rip off things on the outside quite easily. So they can dissolve quite easily because that doesn't involve a lot of energy. But melting and boiling, melting and boiling, but melting and boiling does require a lot of energy. So that's why it's going to have a high melting and boiling point but dissolve quite easily. Now the other property you need to know about ionic compounds is that they conduct electricity but only when molten or dissolved so if we look if we look at you where are you there you are if we look at the solid structure here these ions are in a fixed position they cannot move around they are really really rigid in here so we cannot have a flow of electricity because the ions are not free to move However, when it is dissolved, when all of these being ripped off by water molecules, then it is going to be free to move. The ions are going to be free to move, so they can conduct electricity. Same when it's molten. When it's molten, the ions are free to move around, so it can conduct electricity. So, there we go, guys. This is what the true structure, where are you? There you are of an ionic compound, this example is sodium chloride, looks like, and this is how it relates to all of the different properties.